All right, dude. Hey, I am. Uh, well, ever since I saw the movie, I've been, I've been wanting to run, even though I know I shouldn't. <laughs> But it's so good to have you on here, dude. Uh, you are getting ready to uh, go on another venture. So thanks for taking time out of your day to, to be with us, buddy. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Excited, so, excited to talk. So, Well, so tell me, um, okay, so we just got done. So for the, the entire audience, um, you just had a documentary done called Chasing 400. And um, as an elite runner, long distance runner, um, Tell, just give the audience a little bit of like, well, what, what is chasing 400? If they have no idea about the film and they don't have no, they, you know, they haven't heard about your greatness and what you do in your sport, give them a little bit of a background. Sure. Yeah. So uh, chasing 400 is a documentary um, done by actually another local guy, Jeremy Miller that I met through running. Um, I've always been a, been somebody who's always loved pushing my limits, testing my limits um, in the athletic arena. Um, And that's kind of organically just blossomed into the wonderful sport of ultra running. Mm -hmm. So anything that is uh, beyond a marathon distance is considered uh, an ultra. Um, And uh, the grand slam of ultra running is actually putting four of the five oldest or longest running um, 100 mile races in the country together in one summer. Um, It ended up being over the span of 14 weeks for me. Uh, this last summer, summer 2021, first one was June 5th, and then the last one was September 10th. So, yeah, four 100-mile races in one summer. And uh, Jeremy uh, was a guy that reached out to me. Again, met him through running, and he uh, reached yeah. out to me and asked if he could chase me around. And he he was actually only planning <laughs> on doing um, he was actually only planning on doing one. And then when I told him about the Grand Slam, and he's like. He did a little bit of research on that and found that there's really not any documentaries out there. There's a couple um, that that are out there, but it's, you know, for something that's, you know, such a, such a big feat, such a big goal to set. He was kind of shocked that there wasn't something out there. So ended up being just a good segue for him to get his name out there. And then obviously, um, you know, promote me a little bit. And um, so, yeah, it was really just a great, meshing of both of our passions and jeremy jeremy's a phenomenal athlete himself but has a huge passion for um you know videography blogs that kind of stuff and i obviously have a passion for chasing big things and uh so yeah it was just kind of great how everything kind of just meshed and um worked out so for the audience i want them to understand like doing these ultra runs that you do uh, I mean, they are hard. They are not, I, I mean, it takes, it's in order to get the be- or the buckle, right? The buckle for these races, you got to do with, you usually have to do it within 25 hours or 24 hours. Yeah. So every, every race is a little bit different. Um, so typically the, so the belt buckle thing kind of started because a lot of these, these races, these hundred mile races, they used to be um, horse races and actually a couple of them still are. So West, Western States, which is the one that a lot of people, even outside of running, they've, a lot of people have heard about Western States. Um, it started off as a, as a horse race and they still actually have a horse race. Um, doesn't follow the same course, but it started as the Tevis Cup. Okay. And so that is, a, that is a horse race that is currently still going on. But yeah, it was back in the mid seventies when a guy named G- Gordy Ainsley um, his horse went lame the last 30 miles of that race, uh-huh. and he asked the race organizers if he could continue do the rest on foot. They said yes, uh-huh. um, and then the next year he came back without a horse and just said, can I do it? <laughs> they said yes, and then it kind of all just blossomed, snowballed into wow. more runners were showing up, and then they had to do standalone events for it. Yeah. Um, and so Old Dominion, the first one that I did June 5th, was also very similar upbringing started off as a horse race they still have a horse race but they're on separate days now um Mm -hmm. so yeah i mean physically obviously there's 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 a huge toll that 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 your body has to go through um over the course of a day or or however long Uh it takes you to get there but um kind of just mentally is is definitely what i have found um you reach a point where you're 
just so fatigued. You're so exhausted. You're aching in parts of your body you didn't know could ache. And um, it just comes down to a choice that, that you have, that you, that you have to make. Like if, if you're willing to kind of just grin and bear it, you know, suffer through that for as long as you can. And um, to get yourself that buckle, it's kind of thing, weird, the things that will, that will motivate you to get to, right. to get that buckle. I mean, so yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy to see what you find out about yourself and, you know, the things that you um, grasp to keep you motivated yeah. um, in, in, in those dark moments. And Jeremy did an awesome job of capturing not only that for me, but also just the crew. I mean, like, it's not something that you can just do. I mean, you, you can do them without, without a crew, you can do them without a support crew, but my goodness, it is so much easier um, when you have those people there along with you, those people that have, you know, supported that journey from, from the start. Um, it is something that I never take lightly. It's something I never ask family members or friends to be there. I just tell them that it's happening and they're just like, okay, how can I help? And that's, that's one of the biggest blessings I've found, um, in my life over the years of not just, not just ultra running, but, um, definitely as ultra running has become such a big part of me. It's just the gratitude that I have for the people that are, that are willing to sacrifice their time, um, to, to be there. And that's, that, that's, that's honestly, like I said, one of the biggest blessings I, I've taken from all of this and then chasing 400, the documentary. Um, I think Jeremy again did just an awesome job of, of, of sh showing that, sharing that experience. Well, I, I tell you what, you know, after watching the video, I mean, I've always known you to be a pretty humble man, but uh, there was just true humility throughout that movie about, and you just, you talked about this, about your team and, and your team is really your family and your extended family that there were there with you. And they were there at two o'clock in the morning at five o'clock in the morning at seven o'clock in the morning and throughout the blistering hot days that you went through. Uh, I think it's, it's really amazing. Have you always I, I got to imagine you've, you've kind of been this way because I've just, I've, what I know of you, but growing up, was it, did you always have that humility or was there some such confidence that maybe there was a borderline arrogance? Cause you are one of the, you are an elite athlete in your sport. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious to know if like where that was at, like if there was ever a, a turning point for you, or if you've always been that you've always had that humility. You know, I think, I think I kind of just always have had that. And I think, a big part of that has just been my up, my upbringing. I mean, I can't I can't stress it enough. Like my the family, the support system that I've been blessed with, has just been there my whole life. And it's not just them showing up for me. It's we're always showing up for each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that, um, especially this day and age, is becoming more and more rare. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, like my brother John mentions in in the documentary, it's like it's a very tangible, like I am literally there for you. And that's just something that I, well, I've just always had that, that blessing that my family has always been there for me. I've always been there for them. Mm -hmm. I think growing up, you know, be out being, being the coach's kid. My dad was a longtime coach for soccer and, and Nordic skiing. And I think he kind of instilled a lot of that and not just me, but in, but in my brother and sisters as well, um, that, you know, we're going to be the hardest workers, um, mm -hmm. because, you know, like there's always going to be those people that are saying, Oh, well, you're just playing because you're the coach's kid. And mm -hmm. that was something that, you know, from day one, when dad was our coach, like you're going to have to work your butt off. You're going to have to, you're going to have to go out there and earn it. And, um, we're always going to support each other. And that's just something that, we've continued into adulthood. Like I said, it's not just me. Um, it's John, obviously he does a lot of these ultra stuff as well. Um, but we are just always there for each other um, and continue to always be there for each other. So I think it's just something that we've just always done. So I guess it's been kind of just second nature. It's kind of just, kind of just happens. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm curious to know. So why now? Like why, why was chasing 400 something that came across your mind really put a burden on your heart to do at this point in your life? Yeah. So I think, 
You know, so I started ultra running back in 2012. Like I said, I'd always just been a person who always wanted to test my limits and that, you know, ultra running, that, that ultra distance for whatever reason was just, was pulling at my heartstrings and then, you know, did my first 50 miler and kept pulling on my heartstrings, did my first hundred miler, was pacing people, was crewing for people. And I don't know, this whole lifestyle, this world of ultra running really just, just pulled me in and um, there was just a door like beckoning me to continue walking through it. And I guess one of the biggest realizations that I have that I'm doing something that I truly believe I was meant to be doing is I've never had that sensation of crossing a finish line. I'm like, oh, I'm never doing that again. It's, <laughs> it's always, it's always just been, okay, my body needs some rest. My mind means some rest, but but what's next? Yeah. Um, and so the grand slam was just kind of that was kind of just that next step in that process. You know, I had put, yeah. I had put two 100 mile races together in a summer and body reacted fine overall. Um, and so I guess putting into, um, races like Western States, uh, that is a lottery race. So you have to have qualifying races in order to put in for it and it's also just a very very tough race to get into mm -hmm. um, so I'd kind of just you know made a deal with myself that the year that I got into western because of how hard it is to get into it I would uh I would attempt the grand slam mm -hmm. and that was just a promise that I that I made to myself and um it was supposed to happen summer of 2020 but mm -hmm. we all know what happened there and yeah. uh at that point, I'd been waiting five years to get into or four years to get into Western. So I was like, well, what's another year? So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> kind of just kept running, kept uh, kept the faith in myself and, you know, the that, that goal that I'd set. And um, I think everything just happened the way that it was supposed to. One of the things that I was curious to know is, you know, how difficult is is chasing 400? Like, I mean, is there any statistics that have said, hey, this, these many people have tried it and only these many people have actually accomplished it? Or do you have a number of how many people yeah, so, have done it? So, so yeah, and that's another very interesting thing about it, you know, um, about the Grand Slam is, you know, it's a very prestigious, prestigious series of events. Sure. Um, it's so it started in 1986, which coincidentally was the same year that I was born. Um, so it's been going for 35 years. And in that 35 year span, there's been, I believe, 386 people in the world that have finished it. Wow. Um, and I think every year, um, every year that it changes, you know, like the year that I did it, 2021, I think there were 18 of us that started and 10 of us that finished. Okay. And um, some, some years there are, you know, like 20, there hasn't ever been like 30, but sometimes there's like mid twenties. Um, sometimes there's lower years where there's only like 10, but one, one pretty common statistic with the, the Grand Slam is no matter how many people put in, it's usually kind of like high fifties, maybe low 60% of, of people that actually complete that. Mm -hmm putting those four together so i mean yeah it's a pretty i mean so the grand slam in and of itself i mean you're you've got you've got to be somebody who you know has obviously done some of these events in the past yeah. in order to put in for races like like wasatch like um leadville like western states yeah. they don't allow you to enter the race without a qualifying race so i mean yeah. you don't have anybody i don't want to call them fakers but you don't have anybody applying for the grand slam or putting in for the grand slam that are that are green in the sport yeah. Yeah. They're, they're usually pretty pretty fit people and they understand you know the maybe not to the level of the tax that that's going to put on you but they understand you know um they, they they've been in that arena and they and they get it and that's something that that drives them to want to pursue that that next step in their process so, is yeah. is the time frame that you did it in i mean was that also another pretty amazing feat or like when when somebody takes on this challenge what what time frame do they give themselves 
So that's pretty that's pretty standard. The um, so the the one race that usually changes that is um, if you don't get into Western states, um, you can't you can. So there's there's five races in the series. So the four that I did were Old Dominion, Western, Leadville, and Wasatch. There's a fifth race that's in the Grand Slam series that's called Vermont. It's the Vermont 100. Um, but Vermont 100 was canceled even in 2021. Mm. So um, the, the time span though is, uh, is very, pretty, pretty well set. It's usually, you know, between that kind of 13 to 14 week span between the first and the fourth. Yeah. So, I mean, that's something from, you know, 1986 when this started, that's, that's been pretty, been pretty standard, been pretty, um, that, that's that's just kind of how it is when you are putting in for the grand slam you understand that you're going to be putting your body through 13 to 14 weeks of craziness yeah. um and that's kind of i think what intrigues that's one of the things that intrigued me about it was you know just not really knowing how my body how my mind's going to respond react to yeah. that stimulus that stress over that period of time yeah. um so yeah, pretty standard, uh, the 13 to 14 week window. Um, so yeah. So we've talked a lot about the external stuff. I, what I really want to dive in for the rest of the remainder of the show is like the internal battles, the internal struggles. I think, you know, if there's one thing that when Jordan and I had got done with watching the film and I was just, uh, you know, just going back in my mind, the things that we had seen and heard and so forth is one is, is I just wish there would have been more, footage on those that had not even completed the the race that was at hand you know the 100 mile race because i gotta imagine there's a lot of people that start that race and due to injury or due to mental fatigue and physical fatigue they just can't finish that race they get into these challenges that just can't overcome you have not only been able to do that for just that one race but also you did it for four consecutive races to and accomplish this big goal Tell me a little bit more, like, let's, let's get into this right here, the, the internal side of it. Um, talk about the struggle. Like, what is it that, what is it that you typically face? You know, they say in a marathon, you just face that wall and then you've got to eventually just break through it. Right. And once you break through it, then you're going to be able to accomplish it. But if you can't break through that wall, you're screwed. You're done. You might as well just give up. Right. Yeah. Talk, talk to us a little bit more about these types of races that when they, when, when you go through those mental fatigued times. Yeah, so I mean, I think I think it's different for everybody, but for me, um, the biggest thing that 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 happens to me when things get low, and you know, and it's not it's not usually just once or twice that this happens over the course of 100 miles. I mean, it's it is like a roller coaster of you know feeling good for the first 20 miles, maybe 30 miles, and then you're like feeling like at your peak, you're feeling like, oh my gosh, everything is just working so great. And then just like a mile or two later, you're just feeling like the weight of the world is on your shoulders. <laughs> um, and then, you know, at that point, you know, like maybe you're 30, 40 miles in, you really just have to kind of keep yourself from falling in the trap of like, oh my gosh, there's still so much yeah. more to come. And um, I don't know, for, for me, for whatever reason, twisted DNA or genes or whatever, I, I don't know, like, I've always been pretty, pretty good at keeping myself present and not thinking too far ahead, you know, breaking the races up into more chewable, manageable parts, you know, like aid station to aid station. Sometimes in those lowest of low moments, it's like, get from this tree to that tree, and that tree might be just 50 yards. Mm -hmm. but you know just not stopping you know yeah. there's kind of an ultra running mantra that's out there that's you know like if you can't run walk if you can't walk crawl yeah. just don't stop um so i don't know i think in those moments where things are so low it's just it comes down to a choice again like i said a little bit earlier it, it, it's a choice that you have i mean unless you are physically injured you know like you have you have that power within yourself that well within yourself that you can you can you can make that choice to keep pushing forward yeah. and you see you see it you see it constantly like even in those races you know like 
I would say a good portion of people that aren't finishing those races, they're not finished. It's not because they're, they're injured. It's because they think they can't go anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I think there, I think there's a really important, I think there's some good lessons there, you know, not, and not just, and not just in, you know, ultra running or those, those running events, you know, like there's messages there that carry on into everyday life. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there's going to be days when, or days or things in your life that, you know, you're feeling like the weight of everything is just on top of you. And it can just be so easy to just crawl into the fetal position and just succumb to it and kind of just quit. Yeah. And, um, I don't know. So I think, I mean, obviously there are people that, that, that are, you know, physically injuring themselves yeah. to a point where they can't continue, but there's so many people that, that I, that I've seen over the years in these events. Um, it's, it's loss of will. It's not mm -hmm. loss. Of, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not due to injuries. And, um, that's something again, like I said, I don't know if it's just cross strand DNAs or weird, weird genetics for me, but like, I've never had that sensation. Like I've had the sensation of, holy crap, this is awful. This is terrible. And I'm, you know, 30 miles in, how in the world am I going to get myself to the finish? <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, I mean, I have had those pity party moments, but I, I've never knock on wood, you know, like had it come to the point where I'm done. You know, yeah. I, like I, 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 I can't do this anymore. Loss of will has never, has never been a thing for me. Um, and it's something that I don't really want it to be, but, you know, maybe someday some event, you know, it will get to that point where that breaking point where I just, I don't want to do it anymore. And yeah. that's not now. I hope it's not anytime in the too near future. Um, one of the biggest things that I'm the most proud of with all of this is there hasn't been a single ultra distance event that I've started that I haven't finished. There've yeah. been some where I've had better results than others, but I think the results too are kind of just an ancillary effect of, you know, like that, that's not, that's not what drives me, you know, getting to the finish line is what drives me. It's the, it's the six months usually, you know, like starting, you know, for, for so, so for like a June ultra or a hundred mile race, like the training for that, for me starts six months in advance. Hmm. So like the, the event on that day, like that is truly just a snapshot of all of the work you've put in, all of yeah. the sacrifices you've made, all the sacrifices that the people that are there for you have made to be there for you. And it's never a fear of letting those people down because they're there regardless. They're there because they, they want to be there. They're because they're, they're there because they love me. And they, mm -hmm. that's something they, we talk about before every event. Like they are there to support. Um, yeah. They don't, they, they just, they, they want me to get to the finish line. They want me to get there in one piece. They want me to be healthy and they want me to find whatever limit I have set for myself. Yeah. Um, so I think that's, that's, that's one of the biggest things. One of my biggest takeaways from it is, you know, just the, the event is the snapshot. There's so many people that can get so locked into, you know, like, the results and you know like oh i'm not i'm not or like having a goal time and oh my goal i'm not going to get my goal time so i'm just going to quit and like that that's never i've never had that sensation i've mm -hmm. had goal times but also like it's not to a point where i am like okay i'm clearly not going to get my goal time i'm just quitting like yeah. getting to the finish line is always the goal um might not be the a goal but is always the end goal yeah is just to get to that finish line i you know it's interesting i, I love what you talked about a little bit earlier i thought it's just such a great metaphor to life because uh you mentioned that basically it's not uh people quit not because they're injured but because of, they have no more will to do it right and i and i just can't help but look at that with so many people that quit on their dreams or quit on their goals in life and because it's not about the physical inability to do it. It's the fact that they don't have the will to get up and do it again and take that next step, whatever that next step is. So I think that's really great. Um, you know, one of the things that I love doing, I've, I've kind of found um, a new passion in my life, which is the Spartan races. And 
you know, there's, there's something just really great about going out there and doing something physical. I don't know if I could do anything like what you're doing by any means. I have to do something physical during the, the run. I just can't make yeah. it run, but, yeah. but I always have takeaways. I always have things that as I'm going through these challenges and I'm going through the mental uh, roadblocks and I'm going through the, the, the mental fatigue and the physical fatigue, there's always something that comes up. There's always something I can say, oh man, what a great metaphor to life is, do you do that at all? I mean, like, does that play a part in your, um, because you had a lot of, you, I mean, you have a lot of alone time. I mean, it is just you. And sometimes you have a runner, you have a pacer, right? Yeah. But a lot yeah. of times it's just you and your thoughts in silence for the most part. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's, that, that's one of the things that kind of just a, a segue to that. Like one of the things that people are always just kind of dumbfounded by is like, and even people that have seen the documentary, like, you don't listen to music. And I'm like, Nope, I don't. And that's, uh, well, my battery would not last long enough to do yeah, that. Well, that, well that, 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 that's part of it. But <laughs> it's one of those things for me that like, I don't know, there's so much going on inside my head and so much, you know, there to like, that I don't want to filter out, yeah. uh, um, you know, yeah. with, with, with just that external noise. And I, and I, I I'm not saying that as like, if people need music that's great i'm just for whatever reason i'm i'm a person that just doesn't need that i don't i don't want i don't need that filter i yeah. um i guess one of the things for me for like that i i always come back to is just that gratitude um yeah. for for the people that are there not there i mean like literally like i think about so many people so many experiences that i've built from over the years um you know, in those high moments, in those low moments, like I am constantly like, those people are constantly with me um, all the time. So it, it's, it's always gratitude for me, gratitude for me. There's always, there are always, I think there are always all the, are those kind of lessons like you were just talking about as well. Um, that you're just like, man, if I could just bottle this up and, you know, apply this to X in my life, you know, yeah. like, holy cow, you would be unstoppable. And that's one of the, that's one of the, the more challenging things I, I have found is, you know, like making that applicable from the trails into daily life, you know? Um, and I think that's one thing, you know, about, about having that choice in running, you know, like it's, it's under my control, you know, like that choice is controlled by me. Um, there's a lot of things in life where, everything is not controlled by you. Yeah. Um, so I think that is one of the bigger challenges that I, that I have found is, you know, like, not that I, not that I'm a control freak. I don't need to have control of every situation. I don't <laughs> expect to have that, but just um, it, how, how nice it is to have that ability to have 100% control of what you are doing Yeah. Um, in those moments. And that's mm -hmm. one of the biggest takeaways that I have is like, holy cow, this is so cool that I have the choice right now to continue moving or to not continue moving. Um, and it's completely, completely up to me. Yeah. Um, there's so many factors, you know, in daily life where that's not the case. Yeah. Um, it's not, it's not 100% in your control. Um, and so, yeah, that's one of the biggest things that I, one of the bigger things that I think about is how cool it is to to be able to do those kinds of things, to be able to have the opportunity to do those things, to be able to have the ability to do those things um, in the, in those moments. Um, so yeah, there's, there's just a lot to, to process that keeps my mind busy that I don't need to filter out really anything in those moments. I don't want to filter out anything in those moments. Yeah. That's awesome. I think if, I don't know about you, but the one thing that I always wish is I wish I had like a recorder because <laughs> I can't like yeah. what I, I, what I can remember on mile 10 is a lot different than what I remember on mile three, yep. you Absolutely. know, and for you as many miles Absolutely. as you got, he's like yeah. every break, you probably got to be like, give me a new recorder. I got so much stuff. I just, <laughs> I yeah, just yeah, yeah. put out yeah. there. So, Absolutely. Um, so for those of you that are watching this on our YouTube channel, you see that, uh, Justin is in the back of his truck and, and he's mm -hmm. getting ready to be flying out here. He's going down to Texas and he's taking on his next venture. And I, Justin, I want you to talk about this. This is the last man standing. This is 
Like, if this is not intimidating, if this is not exciting, I don't know what will do it for you, my man. So can you tell everybody what this new venture is that you're going to be planning on this weekend? Yeah, so um, it's a last runner standing event. They kind of have started popping up really all over the world in the last, oh, probably four or five years. They've gotten a lot more prevalent. Um, but yeah, they're like I said, they're all over the world. It's a um, 4.16 mile loop. Um, that starts every hour. So for instance, this, this one that I'm going down to down in Texas starts on Saturday morning at eight o'clock, um, eight o'clock in the morning. You have that hour. So until nine o'clock to finish that 4.16 mile loop. If you don't finish that loop in that hour, your race is done. Uh -huh. um, if you finish that in the hour and you want to go on, you just have to be in the starting corral <laughs> at nine o'clock i love hold on and, if you say if you want to go on because yep, eventually yep. there's going to be a point this wall that we all talk about right <laughs> keep going yep. <laughs> yep so it's so it's it's the same loop again and again um until you either cannot complete that lap in that hour or until you lose the will to 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 go on that next loop the only the only um the only way that i mean the lap it's the same lap the only uh kind of little difference they have is they flip a coin before each lap to determine yeah. which direction you go. Which direction. Um, so, I mean, that's, I mean, they mean, but beyond that, it is the same exact loop again and again, hour after hour until you're either done and you can't complete it physically or you lose your will to finish another lap. Now, um, is this on pavement or is this trail running? So it's, it's on trails. Yeah. So okay. it's in uh, Columbus, Texas. It's called the game backyard ultra. So that's, that's kind of the phrase that these, that okay. these races have been, have been, have been coined, have, have coined is okay. backyard ultras. So yeah, it's a 4.16 mile loop every hour on the hour. Um, and it goes until there is one person. left. Any idea how many people are signed up for this? So last, last I checked, there were 47 that were, that yeah. were, that were signed up. So, um, yeah here we so, go right so i mean i've had you know like countless people already like so how far are you gonna go and i'm like well i'm hoping to be the last ones hoping to be <laughs> so, the last one standing long, and they're like they're takes, like, right? they're like well, well well how how long is that? i'm like i don't know um it really kind of depends on that second to last person you know like how yeah. how long that person goes um yeah i mean and i'm not arrogant to the point like i'm going to be the but like i mean that of course that's my goal going in is you yeah. know like I'm not, I, home. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lose the will to keep going. So, so do you have, so this is actually interesting. And do you have your crew with you or is this something that you can do solo? Because I'm thinking, you know, you could do this for 24 hours, 30 hours easily. I mean, it's it, like, yeah. you, you've done yeah, these yeah. before. So why wouldn't you be able to do at least that now? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I have, I haven't done this event before. I haven't done an event like this before, but yeah, you're right. I have, I mean, the longest one I have been out for, the longest one I have been out for um, was a hundred mile winter ultra that took me just under 30 hours. Um, and that was pretty much self-supported, pretty much just, um, pretty much just in my, you know, by carrying, carrying my, my stuff on my sled and self-supported. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, like I, I've, I've had that experience, but you know, yeah. like, as far as you know the same lap again and again and again you know like the monotony of doing that um but yeah i do actually my, my parents my parents are coming um okay. i mentioned it to them and they were like okay we're gonna come and i'm like my dad initially wanted to drive and my mom was like <laughs> nope nope we're not driving we're flying yeah um, so yeah and i kind of just told them like it's probably going to be pretty boring because <laughs> like <laughs> I'm kind of, just, lotion. kind of just kind of just imploring on them to, you know, you know, get out and kind of explore a little bit that area, of Texas, because, yeah. you know, usually this time of year, they're going down south anyways in their airstream. Mm -hmm. But my dad had some infections and hip surgery and that kind of stuff that's prevented uh -huh. prevented that from happening. So honestly, I think they're kind of just excited to to get out and um, and go do something. Yeah. So, well, I'm so going to yeah, support yeah, you yeah, again. See you, see you accomplish something, yeah. something great yeah. again. So, so. I'll, so I'll have, so I'll have my, so I'll have my folks with me and that's going to be, that'll be yeah. fun. So Love it, I mean, dude. E even just the people that, that aren't there, like, I, I'm not just saying it like 
you're there. I promise. Like everybody that's had any kind of impact on my life, yourself included, like there'll be, there'll be moments out there where I'm, where I'm thinking about the Kalinowski brothers and the awakening and and all of that. Like no doubt in my mind that that those, those, those moments are always, they've become a part of me and um, I'm always thinking about them. Yeah. Uh, Love it, buddy. Chopping that tree down, right? That's right. (laughs) Well, hey, listen, as we wrap up, one thing I want to make sure is uh, everybody gets an opportunity to to watch this movie. It's fantastic. Uh, It was just a great documentary. Um, It's called Chasing 400. They can now where is the best way that they can how how can they best find this this uh, this movie? So honestly, right. It's it's gotten to a point. I think the last I checked, there were over sixty thousand views of it already. Um, uh-huh. And um, you can just go onto YouTube and literally just type in "chasing four hundred into the search field, and it'll pop up. Yeah. Um, it's gotten that kind of traction since yeah. since Jeremy released it a little just over amazing. two weeks ago. So, just um, so yeah, chasing four hundred. You could probably even just enter it into a Google search, and something will something will pop up. But, yep. um, but yeah. And then following definitely. you following you on on uh, social media i know you uh are you yeah facebook yep, so, and... yep facebook and then my instagram uh j underscore kinner 86 okay. um yeah i think this this event that i'm going to down in texas um they've got an instagram page as well um i think it's at spectrum trail racing um okay is there is there is there instagram if people are interested in and following how the game is going to go. Yeah. Um, so, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Facebook uh, and, uh, and Facebook and Instagram are my, my two things. So love it, man. Well, Hey dude, I appreciate you taking some time. I know it's, once again, I know you're traveling and, uh, you took a moment out of your day to be with us today. So thank you so much for, for doing that brother. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it was awesome. I was uh, glad, glad to see you and Jordan at the premiere. That was, that was super fun super cool to have you guys uh, it was an honor to be there dude i'm so glad we were able to get one of the seats because i know that was very limited so <laughs> we felt very privileged to be there yeah, all right guys hey listen you got an opportunity to hear from a man justin here uh you know big takeaways of course and we're gonna wrap the show up here but uh, i just love you know once again it just it, when you follow great leaders when you follow people that uh, just do great things in their life it's amazing how humble they are and justin epitomizes that humility in their life and uh, I tell you what, I just hope you guys enjoy it. Definitely go watch this film. It is amazing. It will move you uh, and it will probably even motivate you to try to go out there and at least run a lap or two around your, uh, around your, your neighborhood. I'm not sure if it's going to get you to 100 miles, but it's definitely going to get you out there because you're going to see the passion that Justin has for his, for his sport. So, Justin, my man, thank you so much, brother. Yeah, thank you, Josh. All right, you guys. Hey, listen, you know, the price of this is to literally just share it. There's somebody out there that you know that needs to hear this message, this story. So we just ask you to do this, get in the hands of the people that you know will best be able to survive through this. All right. Appreciate you. Love you. Fantastic. Have a great day.